Okay, so a little follow-up video to part one, the solar hand truck, the 400 watt solar hand truck. Um, I've completed the wiring and I just wanted to show you how it's uh, all wired up. Um, I love to say um, okay. Uh, let me hook this up so you can see it. Yep, there it goes. So, you see the green lights on this particular green means sealed. I've already set this. You just read your instructions for whatever controller you're using to have it uh, detect the, the right battery, the right type of battery that you're using. That's very critical. Um, let's start here on the PV, the, the solar uh, array input. Um, this is the positive. This is the positive wire. And it comes into the breaker. It wires into the positive on your controller. The negative wire for the array just goes straight on in. No, no breaker. And what that will do is if there is any type of short or the voltage gets too high, the breaker will throw and save your controller. To wire it to the battery, you got the positive cable that goes down to the breaker and wires to the battery. Negative cable comes straight down and wires to the negative of the battery. So you see the positive cable here goes right into the positive. On my battery cables, it, the batteries are wired in parallel, negative to negative and positive to positive. For the inverter, I mentioned in the last video that I had these uh, 12 gauge uh, clamps and I was going to do my own wiring. It really is not necessary for this size of system, but a lot of this isn't necessary. I don't need really any of these breakers on a system this size. It would be perfectly fine to just wire the controller straight to your batteries and your inverter. Just clip them on. Um, they would be way cheaper, save a lot of time. You could do it that way. Um, but I want, like I said in the last video, I wanted to try to make this have the at least the bare minimum components that any larger system would have to be safe mainly to teach myself how to do this. This wire, all these little wires are 10 gauge, which is a bit overkill. For the amount of length, the distance between these components, I could probably get away with uh, 12 gauge wire on a lot of this, but I like to go slightly oversized on my wires, just an extra safety measure. Um, but it, it's, it, on a larger system, I wouldn't do that because it would be more expensive than it needs to be. So, just like on the other, on the controller, your positive cable is what's going to wire into your breaker and wire to the positive of your inverter, and the negative goes straight to the negative of your battery. You can see that you've got three cables connected here and three ca cables uh, connected on the negative, three cables. Uh, that, that, that's not very clean. It, it, it can get messy if you have a lot of stuff to wire in. If I had a low voltage disconnect, if I add anything else, uh, voltage meters and whatnot, just wired in directly, it, it can get messy. So what I would advise is a battery bus bar. Um, just wire the battery straight to the bus bar and then wire everything else into the bus bar. It'll make your wiring a lot cleaner, a lot easier. Another thing is that you'll notice that this controller is drawing power. Those LEDs do draw power. It's minuscule but it does draw off. When you have solar panels hooked into this, it's a non-issue because I'm going to be generating plenty of electricity to replenish the amount that it's drawing off. If you're going to disconnect it from your solar array at night and say roll it away into a shed or something where it's, it's not going to get rained on, then you, you might want to put wire in a switch that you can just flip the switch and then it cuts power because what I have to do is I have to unscrew it from the breaker Get off there. You see it turns off. That's what I have to do to turn it off and stop drawing voltage off of my battery. That's a bit of a pain because you can see there's a nut there that's going to be, it's going to be screwed down like all these others are. And so every day I would have to disconnect that. But if I'm generating electricity, I can, I can leave it overnight drawing power. It isn't going to hurt anything. 
because I'm going to roll it out the next day and start generating whatever electricity was lost. And these batteries can totally run that tiny LED all night long without, without issue. But just keep that in mind. You might want to put a switch there for convenience. And also, as I mentioned in my last video, you really ought to have a switch, not a breaker, for your, your PV cables. Um, I'm going to, you see they're rolled up there. I'm going to have to unplug them and plug them in every day. So that's basically the, <laughs> functionally my switch is to just unplug them from the array and roll it away into a shed, at least until I build a box. And I think that pretty much covers the wiring that you'll have to do to connect this system together. One little word about these breakers. And I don't even know if I have it right. One, one pole here is the, um, the input and one is the output. And how do you know which one is which? I thought that there would be like a label on there that shows positive or like in and out. Uh, but it doesn't. It says bat for battery and aux for auxiliary. From what I could gather on these breakers, bat is the input and aux is the output. But maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. But I wired them all that way and, and it works. So you can see the, the battery runs to the... You can't see it on there because uh, it's, it's, it's like written on that black plastic. But that's the bat uh, pole and the other one is the aux pole so that the output runs there same here You can see that the bat pole is copper and the aux pole is I believe I don't know what that is, but probably zinc I don't know So it this is the input and then the output runs here down to the battery Let's see Yeah, so that wire runs down to the battery. That's the output So that's going to send current down into my battery, but I believe it's it's two-way. I'm not an electrician but I believe that's how those, I don't think that the, that it necessarily matters, but uh, I found a, a few sources that showed how to wire those breakers, and uh, they said that the bat is the input and the aux is the output. So I went ahead and wired it that way. Just the last thing you can see that, this is the inverter. You switch it on, and there it is, it comes on. It draws wattage. You got the LED, and you can hear there's a fan in there. That's gonna draw power off your battery if you leave it on. What you wanna do when you look for an inverter is try to find one that uses as little energy when it's not in active use as possible. But, and in my last video I mentioned that you have 300 continuous watts and that there was a term that I did not know that other inverters have where there's like a, and it's called peak surge wattage. So you can see that there are some inverters out there that'll say 300 watt continuous peak surge wattage, 600 watts. And that is that feature where if you have a device on here that uses more than 300 watts for maybe a second just to kick on, just to start up, then you, you know, if, it, if say it uses 450 watts to start up, you get one that has that peak surge wattage feature and it will, you know, that, that goes up above that, the, that, that wattage and it will actually work just fine. But I, I don't have that, so and then, like I said, this is this is because this is a relatively cheap inverter. It's about fifty bucks. So if you're trying to build a small, cheap system, you know, go with something like this. Go with a cheap controller. You'll be just fine. All these breakers and bells and whistles in between, you don't need. You can wire straight the controller straight into the battery, and the inverter straight into the battery. It'll be just fine for a little twelve volt system like this. Now, if you, if you want to have a little bit of extra safety, you can do it like I did here. See, the next part, I will have the, the solar panels set up, and you can see it all working, and um, probably add the low voltage, so I won't do another video until, you know, you see the low voltage cut off, and if, if I even bother with it, I may just, because this is supposed to be like a deer camp portable system uh, you know i may just not do a video until i do a larger system and show all those features but uh, but there it is hope it helps you